And we are back on Professional Wrestling, the podcast with Jonathan Timur from Corman's LP, real estate lawyers and wrestling aficionados. Pretty soon we'll have back JP L. Curry, real estate agent extraordinaire and wrestling expert. He's been under the weather for a few weeks, but he will be back with us soon. But Timur, you are here co-hosting with me. And today we got a big, big topic as promised last week. We are going to be talking about a WWE superstar has been away for a little while. One of my faves, they completely botched his return. We need to fix this. And of course, we're talking about Bray Wyatt, AKA the fiend. Mm -hmm. So let's start, start off. First of all, there's a few levels to it because it's on social media all the time. They're sure he's going to be back for the rumble. He's come back. He's been injured. He's been this. He's been that. You know, Alexa Bliss uh, has a baby. He's going to pop a baby. She's out of commission. Uncle Howdy. Uh, don't know if he survived that fall from the, uh, from, the, from uh, the, the, it was a WrestleMania Moundu match with Mountain LA Knight. Yeah. The yeah. Moundu Dark match, which is basically just an event promoting Moundu, as we found yeah. out. And we got uh, Corona matches and all this lovely stuff. But I don't think it was a Moundu that did in Bray Wyatt. <laughs> but let's start off first and foremost. Do you foresee that he will be back? Um, I, I do foresee that's just because just the money they make off the merchandise is <laughs> they can't let go. Um, I don't know which version of Bray Wyatt is coming back. I want the original Bray Wyatt version, not not Husky Harris, but the Bray the Wyatt family. Wyatt, Wyatt family, yeah. I want I want that version back. I think they that was they had something there with that character, right? Um, just the fiend has just been like a complete disaster. I was kind of curious when it when they started with it, but just it's you know like not everyone and not every supernatural character can be undertaken came unfortunately, right? So that's that's if they do bring him back, that's the version I want back. Yeah. Do you remember when the fiend premiered back in the day? The fiend was it's been like what three years, four years? Yeah, and you know where what event he was at? No. I believe I'm not mistaken because I was there. It was in Toronto SummerSlam. Oh, wow. Okay. And I believe that was in 2019, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when that music plays and he comes out, it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. The Fiend Done Right was actually outstanding. It was great TV. It, it, it had a good mix to it. I think, and I keep harping on this, but having him lose to Goldberg in Saudi was a big mistake. He was a great gimmick. Nobody needed Goldberg. Nobody cared about Goldberg at that point. And having him, you know, squashed by Goldberg in five seconds killed all his momentum at that point. He's never recovered from that since. And now we got this kind of like, we're, we're, we're kind of in limbo with him. Uh, this version, I, the Lantern, okay, the Lantern, fine. The, the music, I didn't get that. It was okay the first time. But he comes and does his rambling stories, doesn't get anywhere, doesn't wrestle. Uh, and then when he wrestles, it gets botched, and then he just disappears. I don't get that. I think we need to make a clear character development for him. And let's do it properly. And I got breaking news for you because okay. my sources are telling me we know how we're going to fix Brave White. Are you ready? Oh. Okay, let's hear it. Okay, so you were saying before the Wyatt family, he was what character? Husky Harris. Husky Harris. When he was Husky Harris, who mentored him in NXT? Oh, okay. That I don't remember. Okay. Do you recall a little character by the name of Stardust? Oh, okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> so here's how we played this puppy. Cody Rhodes needs an opponent. Mm -hmm. And I love Dom Mysterio, you know that. And Dom Mysterio is a great gimmick. And Dom is going to have a lot of fun. But mm -hmm. Dom is not a long-term feud for Cody Rhodes. It's just something to get us through the day. Mm -hmm. Granted, fine. Imagine how we can play out this whole thing and all the vignettes, family funhouse, and have him talk about Cody Rhodes' development and Cody Rhodes' stardust. Ray Wyatt could play a ton of mind games. You mentored me. Look at where you came. You ain't going nowhere. You think you're popular with the fans, but the fans really hate you. Like he could do a whole bunch of stuff with that. Bray Wyatt, Cody Rhodes feud. I'm in. Uh, like which version of the Bray Wyatt are you talking here? I think at the end of the day, we will have to make a compromise. We cannot go back to Husky Harris. Mm -hmm. I think that for the match, you should come up dressed as Stardust. Okay. 
but I think we should do a Wyatt family more version of him. Mm -hmm. That's the one that works. You're not going to get back the Wyatt family, unfortunately, yeah. because yeah. uh buddy from AW that passed away that was yeah. in the Wyatt family, Luke, whatever. Yeah. Luke uh, Harper. Luke, Luke Harper. Yeah. yeah, they're not gonna I think that they're gonna not allow the Wyatt family mm -hmm. because of that. Yeah. But uh I don't think the Phoenix come back, maybe in select opportunities, mm -hmm. but I think. A really good feud with Cody Rhodes played out properly. It will be good for both of them. And then we can get both of them energized. And maybe eventually they can make up and they can pair up together because uh, it ain't working right now for Cody. I mean, the sing-alongs and whatever, but, you know, I don't want to talk to him. I don't want to hear what he has to talk about anymore. I think it's getting really lame. And he is in real danger, Taimur, of what happened in AEW where you burn out and the fans turn on you real quick because mm -hmm. these good guy baby faces get real boring to us real quick in this day and age. Yeah. It's, if you, it's just a stale, you know, stale uh, product after a couple of months, because you can only kind of hope for so long, right. That, that come you know, that hopeful champion. Ask yeah, Bianca, like, yeah. ask Bianca Belair, yeah. right. They were yeah. booing her. Yeah. Yeah. Who do we like yeah. right now? Who's our new faces? Rhea Ripley. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Oscar. Yeah. And LA Knight. We yeah. like our heels. We do not exactly. like our faces anymore. The The heels are the new faces and the faces are the new heels. How the heck did LA Knight manage this after that Mountain Dew fiasco? <laughs> How? That guy, I just, I, I think everything, the Mountain Dew gimmick before that, what was it? The model, maximum male models, whatever that was called, right? They may um, be back too, by the way. Just saying, but no, no, like, well, they can be back. What I'm saying is that I just keep LA Knight away from them, right? Because, um, Max Dupree, <laughs> Max Dupree, yeah, like how he kind of, uh, you know, just only he could have kind of dropped that gimmick and come back so fast. And, it, you know, you talk about someone kind of getting over naturally, but, and, you know, if this was 20 years ago, he would be a big star already, right? In, in, in WWE's eyes, he would be kind of getting pushed for the title. But I guess this is not someone that at least Vince McMahon doesn't see as championship level. So he's been, I think right now there's a backstage struggle between Triple H and Vince McMahon for how much to push him and how much not to push him. Because I think Triple H, if it were for Triple H, um, depending on how much say Triple H has in in who gets to pay, who gets to be the winner of Money in the Bank, right? And um, and and gets built off that. Um, I can see my my pick um, as I was mentioning in one of the previous weeks was um, I, I'm picking LA Knight as the early favorite to to win that. I can't dispute you. I can't dispute you. That that makes a lot of sense to me. I mean, solid on the mic, solid wrestler. And this is one of those things where we he didn't get shoved down our throats. Mm -hmm. People just like his shtick. It's working, you know? It's so nice to see when your stuff actually works and you're not being forced to like... Cody Rhodes were being forced to like him. Mm -hmm. Like, we're forced mm -hmm. to have him, you know? But I hear you. Like, we don't know the power struggle in the back. We don't know what the plan is. LA Knight's another guy who can go over to NXT for a bit and whoop some ass and then come back. But uh, the only thing that's holding him back is the age thing. Like, you know, because mm -hmm. he's, he, he developed later in life, they don't tend to push the older crowd. They tend to have the younger guys like the Austin Theories. But even Austin Theory, man, he's going to be another honky-tonk man, mark my words, the way they're going with him because he's considered more lucky than good, you know? Mm -hmm. He can never really win cleanly. And once he drops that belt, man, he's going to be heading over to the land of Dolph Ziggler and The Miz. It's coming. It is, mm -hmm. you know, that's where he's going to be unless he can reinvent himself. And I'm worried about him because a guy like Gunther wins cleanly everything. They're priming him to be the real champion. Like Gunther is a guy who's going to be holding the belt for quite some time once he becomes the actual champion. Like he's in the macho man, you know, type of genre, like just, a real, real superstar. And there's there's not that many of them, unfortunately, when you're watching them week after week. Like, we're watching the same recycle guys. Like, Chad Gable is, mm -hmm. you know, my trainer Jared always mentions him to me. But, like, for pure wrestling, nobody touches Chad Gable. He is mm -hmm. so, so good. And he's winning matches cleanly. And mm -hmm. uh, it's fun to see that they're actually giving this guy a push and well-deserved. Yeah, he has that. Obviously, yeah, he has a natural wrestling ability because he's a he was an amateur wrestler, right? Um I don't know Thank was, you. Like, yeah, yeah, but he has that character too. Like, I mean, if you we're going back, maybe right now, f five, six years at this point, maybe four, five years. But when they did that split of American Alpha, and and they picked Jason Jordan as the one who was you know Kurt Angle's illegitimate child, they picked the wrong guy. Like this guy, Chad Gable, 
first of all, has they're both both him and Jordan were collegiate wrestlers. So in terms of skill, but I think just I think Gable is a one one step higher, right? So he has that wrestling ability that Kurt Angle had. He has that character, you know, can be serious, can be comedy, right? Um, so he he had that. He just has a bit more natural um, style for for wrestling for WWE wrestling. And like Jason Jordan was stale, like you know, no character work. And he looks a little bit more like Kurt Angle uh, to do it. So I I always thought they picked the wrong guy. They could have like if they wanted to make the story work. I think Chad Gable would have been a better option. But it's just um, and again, I think this is another thing where um, if if Vince McMahon didn't have as much say. Um, and they really want to create, you know, a couple of new stars like Chad Gable is one of those guys where I don't see, you know, you don't see him having like a lengthy run, but I can see him, you know, if given the proper push, like having the belt maybe once, right, um, for a couple of months, right, and then just kind of, then you kind of, just, you know, when you need a transition champ, like he, he's a perfect guy for like a transition champ. Another idea for Chad Gable, get him to NXT, have him take over Chase U, mm -hmm. turn it to Alpha Academy, Bring back Gable Stevenson, help him out. Like, you know, there's so much you can do with this guy. It's, you know, you have these guys on the mic, mm -hmm. you know, the sky's the limit. That's where I think LA Knight shines, Chad Gable, and they're good wrestlers. You know, I think Bray Wyatt, bring him back to Bray Wyatt. He's getting a lot of flack. He sells merchandise. When the gimmick is good, he's real strong on it. I just feel like they were running him out week after week and they didn't really have a game plan. They didn't think of the big picture. Like, to me, you're going to bring Bray Wyatt, make a project board, make the end result of what you want, where the beginning, and make the steps. And have like the way they're doing with the bloodline, there is a game plan. You can see there's a game plan. We need this game plan for Bray Wyatt. If Bray Wyatt doesn't continue on, I think he's in real danger of going to an AEW. And if used right, he's a difference maker. I know a lot of people think he's done. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I could see him being done is that he made enough money and he's not motivated to do it anymore. But if this guy's motivated, he's a pretty smart cookie. He knows how to uh, shoot out gimmicks. Uh, I'm not counting out Bray Wyatt, not by a long shot. And if the rumors are right, my sources are telling me, and we're going to get a Bray Wyatt-Cody Rhodes feud, feud, that could go on for a while, and that could be fun. Because LA Knight and, and Bray Wyatt made no sense. What did they no. have to feud about exactly? Yeah. Like There was nothing there, like, week after week. Cody and Bray have history together. They're both second generation wrestlers, if not third generation wrestlers. So there is, it goes deep down. The only thing is, it's the only person that they can bring that Stardust gimmick and bring that out of Cody because that's the sore spot. Mm -hmm. And if there's any chance you can bring Dustin Rhodes and bring mm -hmm. Gold Dust, mm -hmm. you bring Gold Dust somehow and bring him with Bray Wyatt and turn on Cody. Oh. Yeah, they have to they have to bring Goldust back once before he retires. Like he can only retire as Goldust in WWE. He can't retire in AEW. Imagine Bray Wyatt putting on the Goldust outfit. Goldust, yeah, I can see that happening. Yeah. yeah. 24, game, yeah. 24 carat production shattered dreams. <laughs> <laughs> but even like, you know, this day and age, like imagine now the whole ambiguity with the whole political correctness, you won't see a you, you wouldn't see gold dust like they would not have this would not go in this day and age no no i mean not maybe a watered down version yeah definitely not not as not, not as heavy yeah. as he was yeah yeah but stardust was just so lame and <laughs> but if cody's gonna put it to bed i think they have to bring it out and i think maybe then we do a fiend versus stardust match gimmick retirement match once oh. and for all okay cody rhodes brings it out one more time Bray Wyatt brings it out one more time, and we have a retiring match for the gimmick. That could be a good one. I could see that being a WrestleMania type match. We need to do something with these guys. Yeah, I think Cody, when he renegotiated this new contract, WWE probably put a no Stardust clause in there, as we all should in our contracts. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And where do you see Dom going after uh, facing off with Cody? Like, is this going to be a good thing for Dom? Do you think this is going to shoot him down the ranks? Like, how do you project? This no, match no I going? definitely, I definitely see this as a good thing for Dom. I, uh, I, I think the number, the days um, are numbered for Judgment Day. You know, no pun intended. Basically, Rhea and Dom are going to be their own thing anyways, right? Um, but I, I can, I, I think definitely not this year, but I can see Dom winning Money in the Bank next year. Um, and still being heel. And I think I see him kind of 
using it um, in a way the Miz or the Edge used in the past, where you know all this kind of threatening to cash in but backing out last minute. Right? So I, I I think I think they've done a really good job with Dal Mysterio. Um, I, I have good hopes for him. I think you know we we were just talking about Austin Theory being lost in the shuffle. Um, I don't think I as of now the the, the progression I see I don't see Dom going that way. I, I do see hope for him in the future. I think they're protecting him so it doesn't happen to him. Yeah. He needs to get out of that poo suit. He's got to hit the gym more. I know I saw him on Sheamus' uh, YouTube channel, but he's got to hit the gym a little better, yeah. be able to not wear a shirt. And I think that's where he's going to progress. And he's going to get stronger and stronger. And I, I foresee a future champion as well. I think done mm-hmm. right, the, the wrestling lineage is there, obviously. They love Rey Mysterio. So I think they're going to do it in the honor of Rey. They're going to take care of him. Uh, mm-hmm. The Judgment Day will start to fold a bit. Obviously, we've seen kind of the hints between Finn and uh, Damien, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, Finn's got his own crony there. What's the guy from NXT again? The I uh, can't remember the guy with the uh, the short guy with the uh, hair. Anyways, I can't. They, they called up some dude who's been chatting oh, it up yeah, yeah. with Finn Balor. I, yeah. You know, I, all these new guys, I can't seem to recall their names. Yeah, yeah. My, but uh, he's going to be jobbing as well. But apparently they're going to be hooking up and there's going to be a huge feud between Finn and, and uh, Damien Priest coming. But like you said, Rhea and uh, and Dom are going to do their thing. And you notice they're not all coming out anymore. Mm-hmm. It's not so solidarity anymore. Um, and they could be doing more with Finn, honestly. Finn's lost too many matches. He's way too talented. And Damien just helped push him. But he's really powerful. They need, they need to branch them out. I like this mm-hmm. idea, you know. Mm-hmm. And if you take a guy like Damien Priest, for example, give him MVP as a manager... Because in a future episode, we'll be talking about these managers. But give him a good, solid manager. Let him do his own thing. Uh, Damien's another guy who could be a future champion. He's got all the tools, everything. Um, there's a lot of hope. So uh, the future is bright in WWE, as they say. For sure, for sure. That's one thing, right? When you have when you have so much talent, I mean, <laughs> they have, the hope is, you know, at least a few of them will shine. <laughs> so. For sure. And... Uh, you know, lots of pay-per-views coming up and lots of results to go over. And we'll see the twist. You know, at the end of the day, you know, as we're finishing going into the summer now and looking into the fall, my questions are going to be around who's come back like Bray Wyatt, who's going to be leaving, what's going to happen with Drew McIntyre, is he going to AEW? There's going to be a lot of unanswered questions, who's circulating around. You know, the Charlotte Flair thing, I knew she's going to come back at some point. I knew Ronda Rousey's going to come back. So there wasn't any big surprises there, but I'd like to see some kind of big name that I didn't expect, do some kind of move, some sort of jump, and that'll get me going for sure. So uh, I think now that also WWE is hooked up, you know, with UFC, I think we're going to see some new changes as well as those brands merge together. So it's, it's a great time to be a wrestling fan at the end of the day. For sure, for sure, yeah. You might see Connor in WWE. <laughs> That's the hope. You never know. You listen, and uh, as long as you got the Pauls lurking around and prime drink, you know, you never know who's going to be there next. So... Tamur, Qureshi, Corman LLP, thank you for sharing your wisdom as always and your opinions. And uh, we'll see where everything goes with Bray Wyatt. And stay tuned for next week. We'll have another episode of Professional Wrestling, the podcast.